Hello, good evening, welcome. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing, Luis? Welcome. Hi, good Norma. Evening. Hi. I see you are on your way home. All right. How is everybody doing tonight? Are you guys okay? Hello, teacher. Hi, Mauricio. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Today we have a new topic. We have started before, but tonight we are going to start to see it maybe in a different angle because we are going to use it to express our own activities, our own information, and how to express ourselves in a past tense. Uh, we know how to use the to-be verb in the present, right? We know. But today we are going to start with the to-be verb in the past tense, all right? Good evening. Hi, good evening, Vladimir. Welcome. So right now, uh, we are going to do our feedback. So let's remember, our feedback is about the last class. Okay, it's about last class. Uh, what was the topic last night? Present progressive. Present progressive, yes. Mm -hmm. And when do we use the present progressive? We have three different usages. But one of those was, was the focus yesterday, right? So three usages of the present progressive. Do you remember? When do we use the present progressive? A future clause. Yes, as in the future, it's a certain future, a near future, right? It's for sure that that thing is going to happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the future, it's one of the usages. Is there any other that you remember? In the moment to do the thing, for example, I am driving in this moment. Very good. Uh, that's when we talk about ongoing activities. It means that this thing is happening at the same time that I'm speaking. Okay, so yes, correct. Things that are happening right now. Okay, yes. So we have future and we have ongoing activities. And there are others usages. One of those was that maybe the, the um, time frame for the activity or the ongoing action. It wasn't just right now, maybe uh, started, um, I don't know, maybe started from a certain moment and it happens maybe it, or it's going to last for more time than the present, right? But it's the present. So, those are temporary situations. Remember, temporary situations. All right. Okay, then. So let's go and let's try to exercise this, okay? 
we want to practice just a little bit about the grammar and also how to express uh, these structure, how to use it in the present progressive. For example, saying things that are happening right now, things that are going to happen in the near future, certain future, program future, or in the uh, temporary situations, right? So allow me to share with you this. Um, <clears throat> okay, here we go. Let's read just a little bit. I'm sorry, guys, I'm trying to share the screen. Now, here we go. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the three uh, more common structures that we are constantly using when we have a conversation, all right? When we talk about the things that are happening in the very moment that we are speaking, for example, uh, or uh, things that we just want to confirm the information and say when this is going to happen, right? Or when is this happening, right? In the near future. So let's read. Are Janet and I driving to USA next Saturday? Let's look at the subject, okay? Jonathan and I. So subject are two people. Jonathan and me, right? So Jonathan and I. Are Jonathan and I driving to USA next Saturday? Jonathan and I are driving to USA next Saturday. And the negative form will be Jonathan and I aren't driving to USA um. next Saturday. Okay? Aren't. Yes, aren't. So here we've got the question. Are they working tomorrow? Are they working tomorrow? They are working tomorrow. They are working tomorrow. They are not working tomorrow. They are not working tomorrow. Are you coming to the party at 7 p.m.? I am coming to the party at 7 p.m. I'm not coming to the party at 7 p.m. Are they having a meeting next Monday? They are having an, a meeting next Monday. They aren't having a meeting next Monday. And the last one, is Guillermo going to the bank tomorrow? Guillermo is going to the bank tomorrow. Guillermo isn't going to the bank tomorrow. So if, we, if you see, it's the same idea for each one. And for you to have how to ask the question, how to say an affirmative statement, and how to say a negative statement, okay? So let's try to practice just reading it. Only reading, okay? Only reading. I say the question, the first one, okay? And you say the affirmative, okay? So let's start. Please open your microphones and let's try. Are Jonathan and I driving to USA next Saturday? Then you read affirmative. Jonathan and I are driving to USA next Saturday. A ver, todos, please, everybody. Open your microphones. I am going to say the question. You are going to say the affirmative, all right? There we go. Are Jonathan and I driving to USA next Saturday? Jonathan. Jonathan. I are, are driving now. to USA next Saturday. Very good. Are they working tomorrow? They, they are, working, are tomorrow. working tomorrow. Are you coming to the party at 7 p.m.? I am coming to the party at 7 p.m. Are they having a meeting next Monday? They, they are having a meeting next Monday. Is Guillermo going to the bank tomorrow? Guillermo is going to the bank tomorrow. Very good. So 
this is a way that you may be answering, all right? But the kind of question we've got here is a yes, no question, all right? This is a yes, no question. So we can answer just saying yes or no. In Spanish, we just say yes. In, in, in English, we, we have to say this with the verb, all right? Yes. Or the auxiliary verb they are asking for because it uh, places in time the idea, all right? The tense of the verb has to be uh, said, all right? It has to be told when we answer. So we can say only, we can't say only no, no. We are going to say no, we aren't. No, we are. Uh, uh, we aren't. Okay. Vamos a decir, si es negativo, no, we aren't. O oh, no, we are not. Porque se puede responder de dos maneras. You can answer two ways, right? So, vamos a contestarlo solo con yes, no answer. All right? Todas afirmativas ahorita. Vamos. Are you not in a night driving to USA next Saturday? Yes, we yes. are. Yeah. Because it's Jonathan yeah. and I. I am included, right? Yeah. So if I am included, then it's we. Okay? Jonathan and I is we. So are Jonathan and I driving to USA next Saturday? Yes, we are. Yeah. There you go. Are they working tomorrow? Yes, they are. Are you coming to the party at 7 p.m.? Yes. yes. I am. I am. Very good. Are they having a meeting next Monday? Yes, yes they, they are. Are very good. Is Guillermo going to the bank tomorrow? Yes, yes. He, is. he is. Very good. Now negative. Are Jonathan and I driving to USA next Saturday? We no, we are not. We are not. Very good. That's the complete so we are. way, right? So we no. are. Good. Mm -hmm. so we are. Yes, and it's okay if we say, no, we are not, right? So now let's contract this in one way for everybody to practice. We are going to say, no, we aren't, okay? No, they aren't, all right? This okay. is the contraction we are using. Are they working tomorrow? No, no they, they aren't. aren't. They are. Okay. Are you coming to the party at 7 p.m.? No, I no, am not. I, I am not. Very good. Are they having a meeting next Monday? No, they aren't. No, yeah. they aren't. Is Guillermo going to the bank tomorrow? No, no he isn't. No, he isn't. Very good. Isn't. Great. <laughs> no, he isn't. Yes, very good. So <laughs> now we are going to say the complete sentence with the negative form, all right? And we could say it in a complete way as it is over here, or we can say it in the contracted way. But the contracted way is when we speak mostly than writing, all right? So Jonathan and I aren't driving to USA, USA next Saturday, right? Contracted. Ahora, lo vamos a leer tal como está aquí. We are going to read it right as it is over here. So I will say some names. Nelly from this one, Claudia, next one, uh, Karen, next one, and Norma, the last one. All right, let's start. Nelly? Are you guys okay? Nelly, you there? Okay, Sandra, please read this one. Okay, they are not working tomorrow. Thank you. Next, Claudia. I am not coming to the party at 7 p.m. Very good. Next one, please. Uh, it was Karen. They aren't having a meeting next Monday. Very good. And Norma. Guillermo is going to the bank tomorrow. Thank you very much. So if you see, we can use complete way or the other way that it is contracted. When we speak, it's better that we use the contracted way to uh, seem more fluent, okay? So let's continue with this just um, as a matter of practice. 
As a matter of practice, we have these sentences. It says, add the to be verb according to the subject, right? According to the subject, you are going to write the correct form of the, the be verb, all right? And let's read the first one. It says, I, mm, I am sending at, at text message. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Number two. She is sitting, 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 sitting right next, right right to, him. next to, him. to him. Number three. Our class are doing our evaluation. Okay, our class is one thing, okay? Our class is uh, like a collective noun. So we're going to say our class is doing a written evaluation, uh, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Unless that in the context that says the, a different thing, for example, if you are talking about each member of the class, each student, right? But we are not talking about that generally. So we use our class is. All right, number four. My assistant, assistant is, is taking care of everything. everything. Very good. My assistant can be she and can, can be a he, right? We don't know if it is a woman or a man, but it's a third person, so we use is. Number five. The police is investigating the very good. The police is a collective noun, but yes. is always plural. Okay. This is one of the those cases that we have to use the plural always, unless we use the police officer, right? Unless we use the um, police investigator, okay, or the agent of the police. That's different but the police as the body right then we're going to say uh, uh use it in the plural way so we say the police are investigating the crime the, the crime always right are always that you say the police then you say are number six the dentist, dentist is my mending mending arreglando mending, mending. Mm -hmm. mending. number seven we are trying to answer correctly. Correctly. Very good. Number eight. The strength. Revising. Revising the strategy. Yes, it's singular because is the manager of the marketing department, right? So the marketing okay. manager is only one person, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, people, I will send these other, I mean, these slides. And meanwhile, I hold the role. You are going to complete this other part. And then when we come back, we are going to... Um, Revise it, right? We are going to review and check. Okay, here we go. Remember that the requirement is that you have to turn your camera on and say present when you hear your name. Okay, I'm sending it right now. It is already right there on the WhatsApp group. So you may try to complete those sentences. Ok, people, miren, es un requerimiento de Instafor que tengamos encendida la cámara a la hora que vamos a tomar la asistencia. Así que, por favor, los que puedan hacerlo, vamos a vernos ahí bien bonitos. Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez Díaz. Present. Cecilia Yasmín Mengibar Soto. Recording in progress.
Sorry. Was Cecilia joined? I don't remember if I saw her. I didn't see her. Okay. Claudia Maria Guerrero Mejia. Present. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Present teacher. Okay, Darío. Daisy Elizabeth Resinos Álvarez. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present teacher. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Present Miss. Imelda Xiomara Pineda Castro. Irma Stephanie. Present. Okay, Irma, thank you. Jose Alexander Hernández Carvajal. Jose Alexander, not yet. Jose Bernardo López Montes. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granado Sorellana. Present teacher. Luis Javier Castillo. Present. Okay. Mariana Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Marina Jansi Sandoval Bonilla. Present. Okay. I'm checking Marian isn't connected yet, right? Okay. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Okay. Nelly Lilibet Andrade García. Present. Norma Patricia Viuda de Arre Vázquez. Present teacher. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Present. Sandra Leticia Peraza Sandoval. Present teacher. Tatiana Ivón Torres de Beltrán. Present Miss. Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Good evening teacher. Present. Hello Wendy. We miss Hello, you teacher. yesterday. Okay. We miss you yesterday. But we are happy that you are now with us. Okay. So let's continue, guys. A ver, ¿cómo les fue con las oraciones ahí? You finished? Easy, right? Uh-huh. Ver por acá y ustedes entran a completar, ¿ok? For some reason, this thing moved over. over. I don't know what is going on. Hmm. All right. Se mueve completamente, no sé qué pasa, que le he puchado, que no le... Se me deja retroceder. Ok, here we are. A ver, los que pueden ingresar, a ver, ¿quién puede ingresar? Que levante la mano. Who wants to write number one? Complete number one. The secretaries are... Mm -hmm. Making okay to celebrate their day. All right, Tatiana. Could you please write it over there? Okay. 
Este es el celular. Oh, ok. A ver, ¿quién me quiere hacer favor y entra y, y para que practiquen typing? A ver. Acuérdense que convertir en ING verb form tiene sus reglas que seguir. Entonces, eso es lo que vamos a practicar ahorita. Vamos a ver. Mi, mi, ¿Quién le ayuda eh, a Tatiana? ¿Lo de letreo? Eh, sí, claro que sí. Sería muy bueno. Démosle. ¿Mm? M-A-K-I-N-G. Very good. Uh -huh. Ah, por ahí está Darío. Go ahead, Darío. Ah, pero no puedo dominar el lápiz, no sé por qué es teacher. Ah, ok. Bueno, por ahí está Emerson. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. En la número uno, eso, ya entraron. Muy bien. No sé si fue. Ahí están intentando. Very good. Uh -huh. Ok, number two. ¿Quién me puso number two? Was Emerson, if I'm not wrong, right? I can't see it. My daughter is, oh, ok, uh, <ríe> hello Luis, me está pidiendo ahí usted mi control, Va, en vez de pedir el control Luis, ¿sabe qué? Ahí donde está el lapicito, en la opción annotate o anotación, usted le da clic y le va a desplegar el menú y usted ya puede escribir con texto, ok, se lo voy a declinar acá. No me deja. Hoy sí. ¿Vio la otra opción, eh, Luis? Yes, turning on. Mm -hmm. Yes, teacher, yes. Okay. Hoy sí ya lo hay, ¿verdad, Luis? A ver, ¿quién me dice cuál es la regla, por ejemplo, para make? ¿Cuál es la regla de spelling? What's the spelling rule? In Spanish. Uh, I can in Spanish. <laughs> All right. And let's try to say it in English, okay? Okay, right. Tati. Say it in Spanish and we will try to say it in English. Okay? <laughs> Eh, cuando termine en vocal, eh, se, se sustituye eh, por ING. Um, eh, ok, no, sí, entonces imagen, pero... ¿y si terminara en una I? ¿Y si termina en una O? ¿Y si terminara en una A? Ah. O sea, no puede ser solo así en general en vocal, ¿verdad? Ajá, ajá, entonces... Ajá. When a verb ends in a letter E, mm -hmm, in a letter E, then we drop, we, we drop letter E and add ing. Drop, drop. Esa es la palabra clave. Drop letter E. ¿Qué hacemos? Quitamos la E. Drop letter E. And add ing. Todos los que tengan letra E al final. A ver, ¿quién tiene algún ejemplo de verbo con letra E al final? Vamos a ver. Make. Make. Ajá, pero eh, make es en presente, ¿ok? Made ya uh -huh. es pasado. No, no estaríamos en esta forma, ¿verdad? Del verbo de ing. Entonces, todo en presente. Pensemos en presente. Uh, have. Uh -huh. uh, ¿Cuál? Have, yes. Have. Uh -huh. Drive. Right. Uh -huh. Drive. Okay. Drive. Oh, drive. Correct. Uh -huh. 
A esos les vamos a quitar la letra E y vamos a ponerles ING. Esa es la regla, ¿verdad? Now, what is the rule when a verb ends in a letter Y? When, when, when the Y uh, grow. Um, ay, no me acuerdo. <laughs> okay, no me pero acuerdo más o menos, a ver, pero más o menos, a ver, dígame, dígame. Ah, eh, cuando termina en, en G. Eh, se sustituye por ING. Ok, ahí estamos un poquito recordando otra regla en otro tiempo verbal. Eso lo vemos cuando estamos hablando de la tercera persona del presente. Por ejemplo, study, studies. Ahí sí cambiamos la Y. En este caso no. En el ING. Dejamos la Y, no la quitamos, ¿ok? Aquí no la quitamos, aquí nos hace falta la Y, miren. Ese queda la Y y le agregamos el ING, ¿ok? Aquí sería studying, studying, con la Y ahí. Sería así, miren. Studying, sí. ¿Ok? ¿Y cómo se pronuncia, teacher? Así, ah, studying. Studying. Uh -huh. Un poquitito más larga, la I. No es jing, es stad. Es que se oye como G, como que lo dijéramos como jing, porque la D en español nosotros. A ver, digan todos dedo. Dedo. Ajá. Digan, ¿y dónde ponen la lengua? Digan así, dedo. ¿Dónde está la lengua? Eh, como en los dientes. Ajá, la, ajá ven, la, la sacamos, ¿va? La sacamos un poquito aquí, de, de, como que la mordiéramos. Dedo. Pero en inglés no es ese el sonido de la D. El sonido de la D es atrás de los dientes, pegado al paladar, con la punta de la lengua. Así, D, D, D. Ok, por eso se oye cuando decimos así eh, eh, una palabra rápido, ustedes oyen que lo pronuncian como una R, ya, porque nosotros la R la hacemos como esa D, ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso es que tendemos a confundirla. Y como está ahí, y, y, siente usted que decimos Jin, pero no decimos Jin, ok. Studying, ok, studying, studying. A ver, todos practiquen esa de. Ese es el sonido de la de en inglés, no es como en español, ¿verdad? Así que vamos ahí ubicando el, el sonido. Bueno, vamos a ver. Number three. What's the rule? What is the rule? Over there, what's the spelling rule? A ver, ¿quién recuerda? En la número tres. Buena. Uh -huh. Buena. Mm -hmm. en, en Bowell. Luz Conson. Uh -huh. eh, ¿Dónde está Putin? Yes. Uh -huh. la, ¿De la regla? Yes. Cuando, cuando termina en una T, se le agrega una segunda, ¿no? Mm, no, todos ah. los que terminan en T. Hay una regla que dice, vamos a ver, ¿cómo dice? ¿Cuál es la... el...? En vocal y consonante. Ajá, pero estamos hablando de los verbos que solo tienen una sílaba, por decir así, ¿verdad? Porque ya si tiene dos sílabas depende de dónde va el acento. Pero el 
el verbo, para, esta es una regla general, ¿verdad? Y es bueno que la sepamos a la hora de escribirlo o de leerlo. Vamos a saber por qué lleva esa doble consonante. Si se fijan, es un verbo de una sola sílaba. One syllable verb. And the rule says that it has to end in a vowel and a consonant, right? Pero antes de la vocal tiene que haber una consonante para que entonces sí podamos doblar, ¿ok? Entonces sería consonant, vowel, consonant, all right? Vowel, consonant, I'm sorry, eh, consonant, vowel, consonant. Ya estoy yo dándole vuelta a la regla, no. Miren pues, entonces, put, doblamos la T. A ver, ¿otro que se parezca a ese? If. I'm sorry? Cut. Cut, yes. Mm -hmm. Cut. Uh -huh. Y uno que usamos bastante para mm. cuando nos levantamos, por ejemplo. Get. Get. Get es, pero clásico para esta regla, ¿verdad? Es un buen ejemplo. Ok, y veamos entonces, number four, number five, number six, number seven, and number eight. A ver, esos son de la regla común, ¿verdad? O sea, de que la mayoría de verbos solo le agregamos a ING, ¿verdad? ING. Entonces, de acuerdo a esta regla que tenemos acá, esta, put, vamos a ver el verbo, uh, creo que ya lo hicimos ayer, ¿verdad? Pero, y lo hicieron muy bien. Pero, por ejemplo, este verbo, este otro, vamos a ver, este otro. Eh, bueno, ahorita eso sí está bien ahí. Ajá. ¿Cómo sería el ING de estos verbos? Just uh, ING. Correct. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué solo agregamos el ING, Bernardo? Es un exceso. Uh, kind right. of an exception, yes. Ajá, uh -huh. e exceptuamos los que terminaban en letter Y, ¿ok? Y. Letter Y. Ajá, uh -huh. ¿por qué? O la W. ¿Por qué? Porque la W y la Y hacen un sonido de consonante. Es como, perdón, de vocal, en, ya no como consonante. Para nosotros sigue siendo una consonante en español. Pero en inglés ese sonido hace que la consideremos una vocal, porque esa sería como la sexta vocal en inglés, right? Entonces, en ese caso, lo tomamos como vocal vocal, ¿verdad? No vocal consonante. Por eso solo agarramos, eh, pues solo agregamos el ing. Ok, this, is, this was just to remember this, all right? Uh, let me clear all drawings and here we go. Hmm. Is there any question so far about this uh, content? Is there any question? No questions. No, Miss. Okay. All right. Es lo que decimos, ¿verdad? Que escrito y leído es como un poquito más fácil. Ahora, vamos a ver acá. Esto es solo para expandir un poquito, ¿verdad? Como a manera de introducción por si no, los que no lo conocían. Y eh, esto lo vamos a seguir viendo de aquí y en adelante, ¿verdad? Todos los otros módulos. Pero stated verbs. Este tipo de verbos expresan opiniones, pensamientos o procesos internos del ser humano, ¿verdad? Como esos que tenemos ahí. Imagine, it's not one, it's not uh, countable, right? It's not countable. You cannot draw what you are imagining exactly, okay? We cannot measure your imagination. We can say a lot, much, 
Mm, so, but we cannot say exact thing or we cannot visualize your imagination, right? So that's in you, it's an inner thing. Okay, so these kind of verb, mm, you are not going to use them in the present progressive form, okay? In the present progressive form. These are state of being verbs. Así se conocen como los verbos que expresan estado. En español tenemos eso también nosotros. Decimos, por ejemplo, que hay verbos de acción, estado o pasión, ¿verdad? Entonces, en esos de estado o pasión, no los podemos hacer en inglés en presente progresivo, ¿ok? Porque precisamente no es cuantificable esa acción, ¿verdad? Entonces no podemos saber eh, o no podemos expresar eso que está sucediendo, ¿ok? Para eso existen otros verbos que ayudan, por ejemplo, como les decía ayer, el verbo get, ¿verdad? Get to know you, getting to know you. Estoy en el proceso de conocerte, ¿verdad? Eh, love, love es un verbo muy bonito, ¿verdad? Es un verbo que expresa muchísimo. Fíjense que en Spanish, eh, tal vez nosotros tenemos aquello de decir eh, quiero y amo, como decir va como gradual, ¿verdad? En inglés, love is love. Love me encanta. Love lo amo, ¿ok? Love la amo. Uh, me encanta, me gusta incluso, pero eh, no lo vamos a hacer I'm loving, ¿ok? Porque no es una acción, es un estado, ¿ok? Ahora, eh, sí existen verbos que son stated verbs, pero que en un momento y en un contexto pueden ser dos cosas, pueden ser action verb, y puede ser stated verb. Tenemos el caso del verbo have. Have. Que se convierte casi que en un auxiliar, ¿verdad? Cuando, por ejemplo, eh, decimos have breakfast. Ahí ya no toma el significado original de él, ¿verdad? Sino que ahí estamos diciendo desayunar. Ya no decimos eh, teniendo desayuno. ¿Ok? Eh, esa manera de ejemplo que sí existen verbos como el verbo have, que sí puede ser eh, usado en el presente progresivo, pero de acuerdo al contexto, si es expresando acción. ¿Ok? Usually we don't say I'm forgetting. ¿Ok? I'm forgetting eh, to take my keys every day. No puedo decir eso. O sea, no, no. No existe ese contexto, ¿verdad? Eh, I forget. No puedo decir, I'm forgetting. I, I forget or I forgot in the past. Pero for, I'm forgetting, it sounds kind of strange, ¿ok? Tal vez ahorita pensemos, ah, sí, ok, pero ¿cuándo vamos a saberlo? Lastimosamente es con el uso, ¿ok? Por lo menos ahora ya estamos advertidos de que existen este tipo de verbos, ¿ok? Que no se usan en el presente progresivo y probablemente ustedes nunca los van a escuchar de esa manera. Hay otra cosa, fíjense que a veces existe una regla general, pero también existen mil excepciones, ¿verdad? Entonces, la regla general es esto. They express opinions or thoughts or state of being, ¿verdad? Right? And we don't use them in the present progressive form. That's the general rule for stated verbs, okay? Como repito, con el uso, ustedes pueden encontrarlos y van a decir, eh, pero la teacher dijo que usted no se usaba, sí. Y ahí van a ver que en el contexto no es un stated verb. En el contexto o en el significado del verbo, okay? Estamos bien hasta ahí, por lo menos ya lo conocieron. Y es uno de los objetivos, identificar, ¿verdad? Identify. Veamos cuáles son esos verbos. Aquí hay algunos, son muchos, ¿ok? 
Pero aquí hay algunos. Tenemos the verb know, love, hate, forget, have, believe, imagine, want, realize, feel, dot, think, mean, fear, like, envy. Okay. Is there any question so far? No nos vamos a meter a la gramática, solo los estamos conociendo, ¿ok? Are we okay so far? Okay, teacher. All right, all right. Ok, les voy a pasar un link para los que quieran ir profundizando ya en este tema y expandiendo. Por acá les voy a pasar un link en donde hay un listado, ¿verdad? Ahí hay un listado de verbos y lo que es correcto decir y lo que no es correcto decir, ¿ok? Porque... En diferentes tiempos verbales va a sonar distinto, ¿ok? Ahorita se los paso aquí en el chat el link. Ahí está. Espero que... Sí se fue como link, ¿verdad? Sí. No sé por qué razón me saca dos cosas. Oh, because of the image. All right. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. Pero el link está arriba, ¿ok? El primero que apareció. Entonces ahí ustedes pueden dar una leída en su tiempo libre y van a ir comprendiendo. Eh, de acuerdo a los contextos en donde se usa ¿verdad? ese verbo. All right. Now, we have to um, jump into the new topic. All right. We have to jump into the new topic. And the topic for tonight is the verb be in the past. The verb be in the past. The verb be in the past. This is our video conference number 14, guys. Oh, ooh, we are almost finishing the third week. Oh, God. Okay, so everybody, please catch up with the homework. All right. There we go. The class objective is that at the end, you will be able to talk about activities that you are doing at your workplace. It means doing right now, and we are going to say to the past, even though, even though we are just going to identify, right? We are just to identify. Then our feedback has been done. We are going to have a conversation using the and we are going to see the was and were grammar practice. E the session one on one will be for Luis Javier Castillo, all right? Luis Javier, are you able to are you able to stay after the class? Oh, teacher, sorry. No, oh my goodness. No puede ser que me deja con los pisques. No puede <laughs> ser. <Perdón>. Okay. Bueno, <laughs> nos vamos a congelar. Vale, miren, chicos, entonces queda available. Quien quiera quedarse, puede quedarse el día de hoy o cambiar ahí con Luis, decirle, mira, a mí me va a tocar después, pero eh, yo quiero pasar ahora, ¿ok? Lo piensan por ahí y me avisan. 
So let's go to identify the two forms of the be verb in the past. We have two different forms according or depending on the subject or pronoun we are using. For example, I, he, she, and it takes the form was. I takes was, right? I was, I was. He takes was too. He was. She was. It was. Ahora, recordemos qué es lo que significa el be? Estar. Yes. Uh -huh. Estar o ser, ¿verdad? Ser o estar. Entonces, lo mismo en el pasado. En el pasado tenemos algunas formas como era, estaba, ¿verdad? Nosotros en español tenemos un resto de formas, así que se nos va a ser bien fácil para los, ahora que estamos aprendiendo inglés, porque nosotros manejamos, imagínense, estoy, está, es, está, estamos, estaban, o sea, es, es una, es un sinfín de formas en español. Y en inglés, imagínense solo, am, is, are, a, was, y were, ¿verdad? Ahora, veamos. I was, he was, she was, it was. Uh -huh. Eso significa yo era o yo estaba, ¿verdad? Y en algunos casos probablemente le va a significar yo fui, pero no del verbo ir, ¿verdad? Sino que del verbo que yo era, ¿ok? Entonces, yo era, yo estaba, yo fui, digamos, ¿verdad? Él era, él estaba. Él fue, él fue el gerente, ¿verdad? Ok, he was the manager, but he isn't anymore. So, ese fui, que no es del verbo ir, sino que es del verbo que era, ¿verdad? Entonces, también entra acá esa, esa forma o ese significado. She was, she was, ella era, ella estaba. It was. Eso era o eso estaba. You were, we were, they were. Esta es la forma para los plurales y también para tú, ¿verdad? Para singular tú. Acordémonos que you es para tú, usted, ustedes, ¿verdad? You were, we were, they were. Entonces, para poder ver esto, para poder ver esto del pasado, recordemos un poquito el presente, ¿ok? Recordemos un poquito el presente y pensemos en lo que hemos estado aprendiendo, ¿ok? Pensemos en lo que estado, hemos estado aprendiendo y hagamos un poquito de memoria, ¿ok? What is a typical day at your workplace like? What is a typical day at your workplace like? Pensemos en tiempo presente ahorita. Ok. Vamos a dar un pequeño ejemplo de cómo respondíamos a esa pregunta. Ok. Entonces vengo yo y puedo decir... Así, right. vamos a ver, vamos a compartir de regreso y vamos a ver cómo va a salir porque no sé, espero que no me lo cambie, ok, un pequeño ejemplo sería así. Okay. ¿Se alcanza a ver por ahí? Vamos a ver por acá. Hola, vamos a dar espacio. Acá. No. 
poner esto acá. Ok, esta sería como nuestra respuesta. During a typical day at the office, I am responsible for overseeing and coordinating my team's progress on the various projects that are assigned to my team. I keep in touch with our benefactors and keep them updated about the progress and the projects and make sure they are happy with the performance and the statistics. Can you find out the to be verb paragraph? Identifiquemos el verbo be en ese párrafo. Vamos a ver. ¿Cómo sería la oración donde está? I am responsible. I am responsible. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I that are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. assigning to me. Yeah. Assigned to my team. Assigned. Mm -hmm. Are happy with the performance. Mm -hmm. That is correct. They are happy, right? I make sure they are happy with the performance and the statistics. Ok. Uh -huh. Veamos entonces, veamos entonces, esto es ahora en el presente, ¿verdad? Esto es ahora en el presente. Pensemos entonces cómo habrá sido el primer mes de trabajo. ¿Cómo preguntaríamos eso? What was, miren, aquí ya hago referencia a que me cuente de cómo era en aquel momento, ¿verdad? A typical day at your workplace in your first month of work like. Ah, what was a typical day at your workplace in your first month of work like? A ver. ¿Cómo creen que pudo haber sido el primer día de trabajo de esta persona? Ok, ok. A lo que quiero llevarlos es a esto. Fíjense que cuando nosotros entramos a una empresa, ¿verdad? probablemente entramos del puesto más bajo o el, un puesto en donde vamos escalando, ¿verdad? Un puesto en donde no es ni por cerca lo que hacemos ahora. No sé si les ha pasado a ustedes en su experiencia. O probablemente su trabajo anterior era un nivel un poco más bajo y poco a poco han ido subiendo de acuerdo a cómo ustedes se han ido especializando, ¿verdad? Entonces, para contar esos cambios, ¿verdad? para hacer referencia a cómo era antes y a cómo es hoy, usamos precisamente el verbo be and combination, right? The be in past and be in present. Ahora pensemos, si esta persona... Ahorita, miren las actividades que tiene. Overseeing, supervising, right? Coordinating, team progress, ¿ok? Está bien arriba ya, ¿sí? ¿Cómo creen ustedes que era si él no entró en, un, en una posición así y él fue promovido? A ver, hagamos un poquito de remembranza. A ver, ¿alguien tiene alguna experiencia similar? 
Eso es maravilloso, eso es amazing, que alguien entre en un nivel y luego vaya escalando, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. ¿Alguien tiene alguna experiencia así? Mi teacher, I, okay. uh -huh. I when I start work in uh -huh. my field work, uh -huh. uh, was a uh, Uh, engineer, junior, engineer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a junior engineer, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So your responsibilities were not near what you have now, right? Yeah. Okay. So Let's imagine about your experience, uh, Mauricio. What was a typical day at your workplace in your first month of work like when you were a junior engineer? Pensemos, I was, ajá. Uh -huh. A ver, Mauricio. ¿Qué actividades pudo haber hecho en ese momento? A ver si recuerda alguna. Usando el pasado de B. I was a, a supervisor. Ok, a supervisor. Uh -huh. I was a supervisor. I was a o engineer coordinator. Ok, I was a coordinator. An engineer coordinator. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, uh, assistant, the production manager. Me borro in todo, the, ¿verdad? Permíteme. Uh -huh. uh -huh. In the past. Different uh, today. Okay. And also, this is very interesting um, because you started with um, different responsibilities, right? It's yeah. not uh, yeah, what you do uh, now. Uh, mm -hmm. What you do now. So let's think about your first day of work and the workplace. A ver, Emerson, pensemos en su primer día de trabajo. How was it? Well, my first day of work was um, very busy. Very busy? I, very busy because I learned new, new procedures mm -hmm. and uh, new News, news test performance for the product and the other I enjoyed. Processes and products details. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about yours, Emerson? Your first month or your first day is okay. Sorry, my bad. Right, no problem. Well, in the first months, yeah, I introduced me with my boss in the new areas mm -hmm. and to the to the new staff. For the 
for the presentation about the each responsibilities, each one, and then I introduce my first first report about the activities. Mm -hmm. Yes, only. Okay, más o menos, ¿verdad? Agarré la idea por ahí. I was introducing to my first responsibilities and activities. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's think about your experience. What is a typical day at your workplace like now? And what was a typical day at your workplace and your first month of work like, okay? Pensemoslo ahorita, vamos a pensar unos minutitos, okay? Y tratemos de elaborar nuestro párrafo de esta manera, miren, por acá tenemos oración, signo de puntuación, oración, signo de puntuación, y vamos armando un párrafo, ¿verdad? Los párrafos también se eh, arman o se unen oración con oración con connectors puede ser before after then next como vimos en los procedures verdad first second ok Va. comencemos ahorita pensando en dos respuestas la respuesta de hoy y la respuesta que era antes ok Vamos a ver. Mauricio y Emerson participaron muy bien. Vamos a ver. Ahorita todos pensando en eso. A ver, a ver, ¿cuánto lleva Karen? ¿Cómo va Wendy? ¿Sandra? Me falta teacher. Ok. ¿Cómo va Sandra? ¿Norma? 
Ah, me está costando, pero lo estoy ah. intentando. Ok. Aquí, aquí haciendo, un poquito he escrito, dije. Ok, ok. Pascual. Bueno. Vaya, ahora para ir refinando, pensemos en que, por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Nuestra plática de lunch el día de hoy, ¿verdad? Estamos todos reunidos ahí de repente. Ay, no, es que fíjate que antes, ay, no, yo estaba a cargo de toda la, de toda la documentación y ahora, ahora, mira, gracias a Dios ya me pusieron a otra persona, ya tengo un asistente, entonces esa persona se encarga de la documentación. Así que ya yo solo me encargo de meter los datos al sistema, ¿ok? Ese antes y después es lo que estamos viendo, ¿sí? Antes era más fácil, decimos nosotros. Ah, no. Antes era más difícil. Así, ah, ¿ok? <laughs> Got it? Before it was really hard. But now it is easier. ¿Ok? Or it was very hard. Or it was very easy. ¿Ok? And now it is hard or it is easier, right? A ver, ¿alguien quiere mostrarnos lo que lleva ya? Ahí pueden compartir la pantalla. ¿Quién quiere? A ver, Claudia María, ¿cómo va? How's it going? A ver, Pablo, how's it going? Mr. Jose Bernardo, how's it going? Teacher, no puedo Nora. leer porque yo no puedo compartir. Yes, please, read it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dice, my during typical day at the office in the past was only cleaning, cleaning the floor after um, attending meeting and people, I go to the bank, attending events, I cook, and the people trust a lot in me um, because only say the people, nor me here, nor me here, nor me go, I am, um, I am, I am, 
only. Okay. <laughs> always, always um, for the um, our staff. Um, always, como diría, siempre, siempre estoy pendiente. Como diría. I am always um, aware. I am always aware. Always. Uh -huh. Aware. Uh -huh. Aware. Así lo vamos aware. a escribir por acá. Uh -huh. W. I. Uh -huh. A. Okay. Aware. Aware. I am always aware. Let's see. I am always aware. Always. Ah, uh, aware. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. All yes. right. Uh -huh. Okay. Very good job, Norma. Very good job. So before mm -hmm. it was only cleaning, right? But now yes. you have more responsibilities and everybody wants to work with you, right? Good. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you said something, Norma, uh, you are always aware for doing something. What exactly? Uh, for the staff or all the people in the company? Uh, for the staff, um, um, the client too. Okay. Ok, entonces así para ser más específico. Mire, I am always aware of the staff and clients. Ok. Ok, of the staff. Of mm -hmm. the staff. And clients. All right. Um, vamos a ver, Sandra, how's it going? How was the typical day before and how is the typical day now? Vamos a ver. No sé si te lo habías dicho, pero yo lo voy a leer. Ok, say it. Ajá. My typical day before, I used to join my colleagues uh, to do my homework. Okay, gracias. Um, Dale, está la llena. My typical day today, with my experience, I am the one who trains the new employees. Okay, so you. No sé si se me entendió. <laughs> yes, you you train your employees now, right? But before you didn't. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. Very good. Yes, I understood. I understood. Could you please um say the first thing you did? A ver con lo, con lo que empezó el párrafo. Eh, um, el primero. Uh -huh. Yes, please. My dick. My typical day before? Before, uh huh. Before, before. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, I used to join the colleagues, I, you say, right? What? Your colleagues, did you say colleagues? Uh, to do my homework. Oh, homework. homework. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But homework, you are referring to. Your tasks, así, tasks, porque homework sería las tareas que usted hace en la casa, ¿verdad? Oh. Y que las lleva para el día siguiente, ¿verdad? Y se las revisan y las califican. Eso sería homework. Oh, okay. uh -huh. Ahora, tasks sería las tareas o actividades que le corresponden a usted. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Exactly. Entonces, tasks. en vez de homework, es, es tasks. Es tasks. Oh, ok. Uh -huh. Yeah to do my tasks. Mm -hmm. Good, but very good. Nice. Uh, Wendy, how's it going? Hello, teacher. Yo si lo hice, mire, teacher. Okay. Um, 
I started in my first award. I was a display in commercial. Okay. No, I work as a promoter in wall sale and supermarket sales in the mobile unit. Very good. You did a good <sighs> job saying this. It's like a comparison what you um, were doing in the last job, all right? Yes. So, yes, you escalate, right? Very good. Okay. Very Thank good. Thank you. Okay. A ver, Luis, Mr. Castillo, Stello. Hello. Huh? Eh, los dos párrafos sería. Yes, please. Um, a ver. Today, my work is more professional. I am not meeting every day with clients. I am designing security system projects and I am selling these projects too. I am giving support to integrators company too. My first work was very hard. I was working as technical auxiliary of security system. I was doing the most tighter work. I was much time in outdoor. Okay. Okay, instead of say tired, say exhausting, all right? The most exhausting, exhausting job, all right? Or work, right? Uh, exhausting job, mm -hmm. like this. Instead of tire or tiring, tire. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's listen to Tatiana. Hi, teacher. Uh -huh. Excuse me, es que se me está trabando. No, no, no. Casi no he podido estar aquí en la Oh, okay, Tatiana. Okay. Uh, we are talking about your typical day now and how was your typical day before in the beginning of your job? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Ya vamos a poner por ahí de regreso, eh, ajá, ya vamos a poner de regreso el slide para que agarre otra vez el, el ejemplo, ¿ok? Vamos a ver, José Bernardo. Hello, teacher. Ok, it's your turn. Please, share with us your okay. answers. My typical day now is going on checking the production. I test, test some pieces and write reports every day. I have to organize meetings every Monday. But before it was very different because I was in another area. I was in a logistic area. I had to prepare orders and organize the shippings for the clients. Okay, so it's really different, two different areas, yes. All right, very nice, Jose. And where do you feel better? I mean, what uh, part do you think it's better? Before or now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think uh, each area has uh, its good things. Okay, like challenges? Uh, do they have challenges? Yes. Uh, uh, both are areas where with a lot of challenge, but uh, in the quality that is my new area mm -hmm. is more soft. Soft. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. the, the pressure slower. is more mental. Oh, all right, all right. But look, um, well, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, that's good, that's good. You say, I mean, you say that you like both, but yeah. you like both, but they are different, right? Okay, 
Good. Now let's listen to Nelly. Nelly, how's it going? Not yet, maybe she's having trouble also. What about you, Claudia? What is a typical day like in your job? And what was a typical day when you started in your job? No? Okay, then it's going to be a homework for all uh, that couldn't participate right now. Please do it and send it through the WhatsApp, all right? And now we are going to continue. Now we are going to continue to the next part because we want to go and check something in, um, let's say, mm, grammatically structure, okay? Structured. So we are going to see the grammar structure for they. Mm -hmm. for the a past of the past of the okay here we go vamos a leer unas oraciones we are going to read some sentences and you are going to transform them into negative but first we are going to see what's the negative form of these be there okay when we want to make the be in past and negative, we just add the particle not, okay? Allow me to share the screen and I'm trying to get there. We just add the particle not and we could say this in this way, I was not, okay? Lo voy a escribir así. Y luego podemos ver acá que Lo podemos contractar. We can contract it this way. I wasn't. Okay. Wasn't. Yes, I wasn't. Y esa es la única oh. manera, ¿verdad? Esa es la única manera de contractar. Vamos a ver. He wasn't. Uh, hay una cuestión que para la pronunciación... Eh, prácticamente suena como una z, z, ok, wasn't, wasn't, ok. Así. She wasn't, wo, wasn't, ok. She wasn't. Wasn't, ajá. Uh -huh. It wasn't. It. It was. Wasn't. Wasn't. Uh -huh. Ahora con este, que es where, es lo mismo. Si lo decimos entero, pues sería con la partícula not. Ok. Ahora, contractado. You weren't. Miren. You weren't. We weren't. They weren't. Okay. This is the negative form of the past. So we say, I wasn't there. I wasn't a doctor yet, etc. Right? He wasn't. She wasn't. He wasn't my boss. She wasn't my classmate. It wasn't the correct <laughs> product. Uh, you weren't on time. We weren't there yet. They weren't my friends. Okay. So we can use the negative form in a uh, more fluent way using the contractions. Okay. Because we could say also, you were not, depending on if I want to emphasize the negation. All right. So in this case, we are going to the next part. And the next part is that we are going to read. 
each of these sentences and we want to rewrite them in past, okay? Let's rewrite these sentences in past. And it says, the first one, they are in the first sales team. ¿Cómo sería en negativo? They weren't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Me fui, me fui, me fui, me fui. Here it is. Aha. Lo vamos a pasar a el pasado, ¿verdad? Y al mismo tiempo vamos a escribir negativo y afirmativo. ¿Ok? Vamos así. Let's rewrite them in affirmative and negative. Aquí las voy a poner así, ustedes las van escribiendo en su orden, ¿verdad? Ok, they, vamos a cambiar esto. Ajá, they, they were. were. They were. Uh -huh. In the first sales team. Ok, ahora escribamos la en negativo. They were. In the first sales team. Team, ok. Vamos a ver. Ahora la siguiente, ¿cómo sería? The gray one. This one. She, she was she a was... international. Mm -hmm. She was the first international CEO to visit our company. company. Hmm. Negative. She was an international CEO. Okay, let's think about this one, the yellow one. This is my this is this was, no. This was my contribution. Company. Okay. Negative. This, this wasn't. This wasn't. My conversion to the company. What about I the blue was, one? Mm -hmm. I was I the chief. I was the chief accountant. Accountant. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, wasn't the chief accountant. Okay. Yes. The green one. We were, we were, we were, we were the best company, the best company in Central America. Central America. Okay. Negative. We, we were, we were the best company, the best company in Central America. Okay. What about the next one? Uh, uh, a company. Thank you. Mm -hmm. she, was she was never late at work. She wasn't. She wasn't late at work. Never late at the world. Okay. He was. He was. Always in the garden at lunch time. Time. He wasn't. He wasn't Always in the garden, in the garden 
at long time. The training room wasn't wasn't ready for next. Ready for the next conference. An affirmative. The train room was, was ready for the next conference. All right. Damn it. So here we are. Hmm? Yeah, let's turn it, right? Voy a poner así. Para que ya copien y peguen en su documento que estén tomando nota. Ok. All right, so we rewrite it. I mean, um, the sentences in two different ways, right? We rewrote, I'm sorry, we rewrote the sentences in the affirmative and the negative way, right? Remember, they, you, and we were and weren't. She, it, he, and I was or wasn't. Okay. Is there any question so far about this? Is there any question? Not yet. No question. All right. No question. Let's go then to the manual. In the manual, we have a conversation. On page 39, vamos a saltar un tema eh, prácticamente completo y lo veremos el día de mañana, ¿ok? Ese tema que no hemos tocado en el manual es siempre de el present progressive, ¿ok? Y, de, y tiene también una mezcla con el presente simple, ¿ok? Lo vamos a ver el día de mañana. Ahorita vamos a continuar con was and where. Y la página es 39, on page 39. Please, everybody, go there, turn to the 39. And let's read this conversation. They are talking about a training. Have you ever been, a tra uh, been to a training? Do you have trainings in your company? Do you attend trainings? No. Yes, teacher. Okay. If you attend trainings, how often do you attend trainings? Uh, always uh, when I write the people, the new people. Okay. All right. So uh, let's read this conversation and then we're going to practice it. It says, hey, Lorna, how are you? Did you attend the training last week? Lena, yes, I did. The training was awesome. It was at the new hotel. Sounds great. Tell me everything about it. Was it difficult? Well, it wasn't that difficult, but it was very challenging. Many international speakers came. No kidding. Who were the speakers? Uh, let's see. Um, Andrew Johnson from England and Magali Zanini from Brazil. I love Miss Zanini. She was the first international CEO to visit our company two years ago. You're right. Okay. Let's read it again. They are excited, right? They are really excited talking about this training. But let's look. It says, hey, Lorna, how are you? Did you attend the training last week? Lena, yes, I did. The training was awesome. 
It was at the new hotel. Sounds great. Tell me everything about it. Was it difficult? Well, it wasn't that difficult, but it was very challenging. Many international speakers came. No kidding. Who were the speakers? Uh, let's see. Andrew Johnson from England and Magali Zanini from Brazil. I love Mrs. Zanini. She was the first international CEO to visit our company two years ago. You are right. Is there any question so far about the vocabulary in this conversation? Yes, no kidding. But no no kidding that's an expression when you want to say like no joking okay sin broma de veras como quien dice no no está bromeando right mm -hmm. nosotros en buen salvadoreño no freguepo eso significa right uh -huh. no <laughs> kidding <laughs> yes kind of <laughs> Uh, no fregué, pues, y quienes estuvieron dando la conferencia. So that's what it says. No kidding. Who were the speakers? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other question? No. No more mm -hmm. questions? All right. Let's listen to Wendy and uh, let's see, Karen, please. Role play the conversation. Hello. Karen? Wendy? You start the chat. Okay. You may start. Yes, please, Wendy, you start. Hi, Lorna. How are you? Did you attend the training last week? Lana, yes, I did. The training was awesome. It was at the new hotel. Sounds great. Tell me everything about it was difficult. Difficult. Well, it wasn't that difficult, but it was very challenging. Many international speakers came. No, kidding. Wow, no kidding. What were the speaker? Who? Let's see. Andrew Johnson from England and Mag Magali Sunny Sunny from Brazil. I love you, Miss Sanini. She was the first international. Uh, say. Say yo to busy or company do yours, I go. You are right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Vaya, un consejo para todos es que me encantaría verlos con un poquito de más confianza, chicos. Miren, aquí estamos en confianza y entre chero, ¿verdad? Aquí nadie nos vamos a reír de ustedes, de nadie. Al contrario, vamos a disfrutarlo con ustedes, ¿ok? Así que hay que hacerlo tal vez un poquito con más aire. A veces se nos va el aire y, y se nos va el aire y el aire es lo que no nos deja, ¿verdad? Los nervios. Pero no, aquí miren, si nos equivocamos, así como que ay, vamos a aprender. El que no se equivoca no aprende, ¿verdad? <laughs> Sorry, que teacher. Uh -huh. um, yo tengo una duda, teacher. Tell me. ¿Qué significa training? Training significa entrenamiento. Okay. Ajá, uh -huh. significa capacitación mm -hmm. también. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, teacher. All right. Then, guys, esta palabra que está aquí, 
awesome. Aquí no se lee awesome, se lee oh, awesome, okay? That's awesome, yeah? Oh, awesome. And hotel, el acento va en tell, no en ho. Como nosotros en español decimos hotel, ¿verdad? Así, solo que démosle la J, ¿verdad? Hotel, right? Oh. Hotel, no digamos hotel, hotel, okay? And the other was, uh -huh, este. Acordémonos que la pronunciación de esta palabra de pregunta es who, who, con una J, ¿verdad? Who were the speakers? Who? Who? Okay, aquí no decimos who, decimos who. Okay, miren. Y cuando tenemos estas cosas así como expresivas de inglés, usualmente la letra U es como una A, okay? Es como el um, uh, okay, eso. Eso está escrito acá. Uh, let's say, right? It's not U, no, no existe eso, okay? U, U ya sería como U, right? Different, right? So it's ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, right? Like that. And the other one was, I think every, that's everything. All right, let's see. Vamos a ver. Luis and Sandra, please role play the conversation. Okay. Hey, Lorna, how are you? Did you attend the training last week? Sandra? Sandrita? No, Sandra? All right, let's try, please, uh, with... Okay, Norma, please. Norma, Norma. Okay, teacher. Um, Lana, yes, I did. The training was awesome. It was at the new hotel. 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 Sounds great. Tell me everything about it. Was it difficult? Well, it wasn't that difficult, but I was very training. Many international speakers came. No kidding. Who were the speakers? Um, let's see. Andrew Johnson from England in Magali Sani from Brazil. I love Miss. Sanini, she was the first international CEO to visit our company two years ago. You are right. Great. 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 Yes. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, no, you are right. That, that's correct. Ah. You are right. You okay. were great. You were okay. great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, people. So is there any question about this conversation? No question? All right, then how does Lorna describe the training? How does Lorna describe the training? Mm -hmm. Was the training was awesome. Yes, awesome. Oh, awesome. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, the training was because it was the past tense. It finished in the past. So we say it was awesome. Oh, awesome. Okay. When was the first time Mezzanini came to the ladies' company? When was the first time Mezzanini came to the ladies' company? Uh, was it was two years ago. Yes, it was 
two years ago. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where did the training take place? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Where? It was at the new hotel. Very good. It was at the new hotel. So we can describe past events, mm -hmm. right? We can describe past events. So we saw that we can compare things in the, um, in the past with the present. And also we can describe events in the past using the to be verb, right? Remember that okay. the meaning is ser o estar, estaba o era, ¿verdad? Okay, so it says that we use the past to be to talk about situations, I'm sorry, situations in the past. For I, he, she, it, we use was. We, they, and you, we use were. Remember that you is singular and plural, right? And let's see the affirmative statement we have. A subject, the verb be in past, and then the complement, right? The training was very helpful. All the employees were happy to attend. It means plural, singular. Plural, where? Singular, was. Negative statement. We add the particle not, and we can, we can contract it. Right? It wasn't difficult. It was not difficult. We were not unwilling to help. We weren't unwilling to help. All right. Is there any question? Are we okay? Yes. Teacher, excuse me. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Unwilling? Unwilling. Unwilling um, significa unwilling. que no tenían voluntad. Ajá. Nosotros no era que no teníamos voluntad, dice. ¿verdad? No estábamos indispuestos, por decir así, pero nosotros tenemos otro significado para indispuesto. O tendría que ser como no dispuesto. Ya. Yeah. O sea, no tenían voluntad. El contrario, el opposite, es willing. ¿Ok? Que sí es, tiene la voluntad de hacer, ¿ok? Así. Willing. Y proviene precisamente de voluntad. Voluntad es will. ¿Ok? Will, willing, and willing. ¿Ok? Ok, yeah, thank you. There you go. Uh -huh. Estar dispuesto a tener voluntad. Ok, people. Aquí tenemos una descripción un poquito más abajo, pero ya casi terminamos, entonces vamos a ir a divertirnos. ¿Quién quiere hablar de la Shakira y de Piqué? Ajá, ¿verdad? <risa> pues fíjense que les hice una actividad precisamente de ellos. Vamos a ir a ver allá en la plataforma. Go to the platform y nos vamos a enterar de lo último de ellos. Vamos a ver. Ajá. Eso sí, vea, ya se despertaron ustedes. <risa> Right, vamos a la plataforma. In the platform we have in the discussion label, I posted an activity. It's a true, false, um, ticking, right? You, you have to tick or true or false um, according to the statement. But you have to read an article. You have to read an article. I posted the link over there. And um, you are not going to read all the timeline right of that relationship you just uh, you are just going to read uh, um, about it's only the introduction right of the article allow me to take you there ya no me acuerdo como como okay Casi llego ahí. Ahí estamos. Ok, here we've got it. Pueden llegar por el lado abajo del de video del día de hoy, donde vamos a colocar el video del día de hoy. Pero que sería el 14, si no me equivoco, que estamos en el 14. 
Yeah, 14, video conference number 14, Four. then you mm -hmm. scroll down. Yes, you scroll down and go to the bottom of the page. You will find posted the activity and this activity says, Shakira and Piqué was and where, right? Was and where. So let's go to the posting and to the post and let's go there. Ah, oh, okay, no problem. And it says, read the article, go to this link, right? Read the article, then choose true or false to each statement, all right? These are past events, don't worry, this is past event. This is a past event. So you go there, to this link, and this yes, is okay. People, it's a magazine. You are going to read no more than, okay, no more than uh, till here, all right? Then before June, 2010, before right here, I think it is, okay? to answer so hasta, hasta aquí miren hasta aquí está este día todo esto van a leer no van a leer más bueno si quieren pues lo pueden leer verdad está bien interesante pero <laughs> it's really interesting but it's okay there right a ver alguien quisiera leer ya solo tenemos two minutes Pero leamos, nombre, no seamos así. A ver, vamos de regreso. Ajá. Excess, the first okay. thing. Uh -huh. Shakira and Gerard, ¿qué relationship timeline? Time From meeting on the set of Waka Waka to raising their two songs. Here's a breakdown of Shakira and Gerard Piquet's uh, relationship. Okay, that's the introduction, right? So let's read. Mm -hmm. Please continue. Yes, please. Uh, Shakira and Gerard Piqué are going there separate ways. The pop singer and her long, long time boyfriend announced their separation in a joke statement. On June for uh, 2022, we re regret to confirm that we are separating. The pair said, requiring privacy for the well-being of the of their children who are there their maximum priority. 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 The couple, the couple first the couple? Met, the couple first met in 20, uh, 2010. 2010. Uh -huh. 2010. 2010 on the set of the Waka Waka this time for Africa music video. That track was the official song of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the FIFA 2010 World Cup, right? Uh -huh. Okay, uh-huh. Well, in South Africa, and multiple, multiple 
ballers make an appearance, appearance in the appearance in the video, including Spanish Gerard Piquet, the FC Barcelona defend defender, coach, uh, coach Shakira A. Shakira Sai. Uh-huh. Shakira Sai. Uh-huh. I Shakira Sai. I wasn't a soccer fan, so I didn't know who he was. Shakira told uh, to the 60 minutes in the 2020 interview. All right. And then what it says, when I saw when I saw the video, I was like. Um, mm, but, like this, mm, that one, mm, kind of good. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that one kind uh -huh. of cute, uh -huh. and then someone the least decided decided to introduce us. Uh, no, to to introduce us, to introduce yeah, to us, mm -hmm. uh, to introduce us. Yes. Uh-huh. He was as wily as a smitten. Smitten. Telling, telling a Spanish TV3 in... <laughs> 2016. About their encounter. 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 Okay. All encounter. Right. I think it is okay till there. I think it is okay till there. Uh, we may answer the questions till there, right? Mm -hmm. Ya más o menos le agarraron la historia. Ya pusieron true or false los que estaban escuchando. Number one, is it true or is it false? True. True? Okay. True. Uh -huh. Can you read it? The first one is true. Why? Because it says Shakira knew who Pique was when they first met. Mm -mm, that's false. That's false. She didn't know who, she, who this guy was because she wasn't a fan of football. And she says that. All right. According to the article, right? According to the article and this Twitter thing. Okay. Mm -mm, no. He, I mean, she didn't know. She didn't know who was Piqué. Solo cuando vio el video, que aparecieron todos ahí. Ay, ese niño sí parece bonito, dijo. Así cuando dijo, mm, mm, ya. Yeah. Entonces, hasta que vio el video, se fijó más en él. Ok. Y así, continuo, así continúen ustedes. False or true, lo vamos a ver mañana, ok. Así que diviértanse un ratito con la historia para ver cómo fue el asunto. <risa> Y todo así que, ay, teacher. <laughs> okay, allow me to um, call the roll. Let's call the roll. So I'll, I'll do it in a very quick way. Okay, please say present when you hear your name. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez Diaz. Present teacher. Cecilia Yasmin Nguibar Soto. Claudia María Guerrero Mejía. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Present teacher. Ok. Tacey Elizabeth Recinos Álvarez. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present teacher. Ok. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Present miss. Imelda Xiomara Pinada Castro. Irma Stephanie Carranza Rivas. Ok, thank you, Melda. Um, José Alexander Hernández Carvajal. Irma Stephanie. ¿Quién sé? José Alexander Hernández Carvajal. José Bernardo López Montes. Present teacher. Ok, José Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granado Sorellana. Luis Javier Castillo. Present teacher. Mariana Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Present teacher. Okay. Karen. Uh -huh. 
And I don't see Marianne, right? Eh, Marina Chancy Sandoval Bonilla. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Nelly Lilibet Andrade García. Norma Patricia Viuda Present. de Arre Vázquez. Thank you, Nelly. Present teacher. Ok, Norma. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Present teacher. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Sandra Leticia Peraza Sandoval. Present teacher. Tatiana Ivón Torres de Beltrán. Present, Luis. Marisela Ramírez Guevara. Present, teacher. Okay. Then here we go. I think we finished. Remember to do your homework, please. And if you have any question, you may ask me through the WhatsApp group. And also you can participate in the WhatsApp group. You can share also material that you find that it's that you think it's going to be helpful for your classmates. Please do. Okay. You are welcome to do it. Please participate in the discussion label and also remember to do your homework. Okay, people. Bye bye, Luis. You, uh, ah, Luis no se queda, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿alguien se quiere quedar? ¿Alguien se quiere quedar a comer pisques? ¿No? <ríe> Ajá. No, vaya, pues. No, le, sí, no quieren pisques. No les gustan los pisques a ustedes. Va solo de pollo, de gallina, no? vea. Uh -huh. Son ricos con salsa picante. Uh, sí, con crema. Mm, my goodness, yes. Yeah. All right. A ver, ¿quién se queda conmigo? Ya nos quedamos todos, piche, ya son las no, 18. No, no. Qué chévere, sí, qué chévere. Gracias, gracias por hacerme compañía. Ahorita les mando los tamalitos, oye, ya van a ver. Esa fue la forma sutil de Mauricio decir, ya tengo listo el café, mándeme los pis, que vea. Ok, people, have a very good night. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you. Tomorrow. Good night. Good night. All right. Bye.